I think today in schools too many times um, with the athlete, with 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 the kid that has disciplinary problems, we're real. The teachers are real quick to put them on an island by themselves. Well, nobody likes being by themselves. So what happens is, what do you do on an island? And you want to talk to somebody. You talk louder. You try to get attention. You wave flags. You do everything. But you're really only calling for help not to be left on this island. And I just think a lot of kids today uh, uh, in the organization, we, um, uh, I, I, my whole thing, we do Boys Without Fathers. And one of my things before uh, we are able to start anything, I tried to do it myself before I assigned somebody else to do it. And what I found was um, even in our mentoring, you know, everybody wants to say, I want to be a mentor because we think somehow we, we arrive. But what we don't realize is that mentoring is a commitment. It is not just I get to see you today say a couple good Bible scriptures to you, you know, say a couple of stories and then you're gone. That's not mentoring. When you're mentoring means that you're going to bring these people into your family, bring that child into your family, and you're going to nurture it. And I still think that today we're missing a lot of nurturing in our school system. If you don't get it, well, you know, pass you on. If you're likable, we'll put you on the island. You just go to sleep when you hear the bell, move to the next place. So I, I, no, I, I totally agree with that. You know, that, yeah. that that's, a, that's a very valid point that, that you're making because uh, myself coming up without a, a father uh, with in my home as well, I, I do understand the, the mentoring shift. And we're going to talk a little bit about that particular uh, part of your, uh, your organization. But I kind of want to continue on with your story as how it led up to this organization. We'll get into the organization as we lead up to how you began to, to formulate that particular thing. What happened after you, you, you left high school and you got up to age 36 realizing that you haven't really learned how to read? What hit you? What turned you around to make you want to do something different and to become better? Okay. Um, after, after leaving the high school in the 11th grade, uh, of course, I couldn't read. I went back home to my mom and dad and, uh, just like any other mom and dad, you got to, if you ain't going to do this, you got to get out of here. Uh, you got to get a job. But my mom and dad knew that my, what my situation too, because if you can't, if you can't read, you can't read. That's not, that's not a secret. Um, so what happened was, uh, my mom had drove me, uh, to a company in Milwaukee, um, what was called Mel Kramer Sales. I remember it like it was yesterday. She filled out the application for me, and I took the application in, and I knew that um, my, I'm going to call it a gift now. I'll call it something else later. But I knew that my, my gift or this expertise I had, I knew if I got in front of the man, I could sell the man. I could get the best mm-hmm. job. I, could, I, I knew how to... Um, let's, how do you say, get around the system. I knew when to work at the right time to work. I didn't work hard, but I knew when the man walked around the building, when he came, if he saw me working the hardest, he would think that I was the hardest worker. Um, worked there for about a couple years, uh, ended up becoming uh, assistant buyer at this company. Uh, again, I'm always hustling, so ended up meeting some more people, schmoozing with them, uh, I end up in sales for a company um, selling automotive, automotive parts now uh, in the Chicagoland area. Um, I get that I get that position, and it's a very well paid position. At that time, you know, uh, I was a young man, 21, 22, making forty thousand dollars a year. Company car, everything's going on. But there's one thing that nobody knows is that I can't read. So I go on. Let me ask you, I want to to stop you right there, Danny, because right there, how did it make you feel? How did it basically, you kind of smoothed your way through. Was it a deterrent of yours, or did it actually motivate you to to drive more to get that that particular job that you have because of your, let's put it this way, educational handicap when you knew what your situation was? What made you, and I'm trying to get to a point here, what drove you? To, to seek after such a prominent position at the position that you were in as far as your handicap? Well, I wanted, 
I wanted to live. I wanted to be successful. Um, I had been successful earlier in my life in the basketball, and I know if I if I tried and put all my energy in this, I could probably prove to everybody that you don't need to read and you still can be successful. Um, at the same time, um, it felt good, but it didn't feel good because I didn't know who I was. I mean, I just, you know, I don't really want to glorify, and, and at the same time, we're not to where maybe you would like to be in this conversation, but as I look back now, it's hard to explain knowing what I know today. You know, um, I mm -hmm. thought it was me. I thought, I mean, I put myself in the right place, but there was a covering over me that I didn't realize until later years. Um, I, I would like to be here, and, and that's what's so beautiful about, you know, who teaches me is that um, there's no way that I tell the story where I can take care of it. I can, I can take ownership of it. All I can tell you is that I knew enough to put myself in the right position, and when I was in that position, to do my best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, am no, I, you, 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 go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, you, you got the questions. Well, actually, I was thinking about the, the, the point that when you were learning these particular businesses, you were getting involved in businesses, I'm looking here that you were actually taking unprofitable businesses and growing the businesses uh, to their maximum capacity and turning around unprofitable businesses. How did you come to doing that with, uh, I guess, no formal education? This is great, great, this is a great story for, for, for all of our listeners out here that are paying attention to, what, to what's happening here. How someone from nothing takes something and makes, I mean, just an amazing success story. How did you do that? Well, um, again, I'm going to stick the color uh, a gift right now. But what it is is with, with not having that, uh, that skill, so you become sharper at other things. So I was a good talker. People liked me. I knew that I knew how to make people like me. But I also was I had enough sense in me to know how to make something better. Um, so I would walk into, at the time, I was selling Goldblatt's in Chicago. Goldblatt's was, at that time, probably had about 30, 40 retail stores. Um, I remember Goldblatt's. And, oh, yeah. And so it's, it, I, it's easy for me to walk into a situation and see, see the worst and how to make it better. Um, again, it's a gift. Um, but I take the time. I talk. Uh, I, I would talk to the buyer. I would talk to the clerk. I would talk to the customer. So I would find out what they needed, and then just go back and report. Uh, when you sit down with the buyer, I'd sit down with the buyer and say, "Well, you know, I was in your stores, servicing your stores last week. I was talking to Nancy, and Nancy said she can sell more blue paint than she sells yellow paint. I've been ordering too much yellow paint, and she need more blue paint." I bring in more mm -hmm. blue paint, all of a sudden now the numbers look good, and guess what? Mm -hmm. I'm feeding back into my, my demon because I look like a hero now to Mr. Buyer and the president. Well, man, our numbers are up this quarter. Uh, we're, we're doing well. And at the same time, it only felt good for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. so that's, that's pretty much um, how that went. Again, I'm still running around thinking that it's me. I'm so confused at this time. You would think having a good job and things like that would be enough. That wasn't enough because in the same time, I got involved in drugs, uh, distribution of drugs. I was distributing. I knew I could distribute one thing. I think I could distribute everything. Why not get filthy rich, you know? 